In Labour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Just to, to humanise this debate somewhat, um, I spoke to a, a number of disabled people th this morning and it was amazing what they had to say. And like most people in this chamber and most APs, I've had lots and lots and lots of people, disabled people, at my surgeries uh, over the past uh, couple of years or so with regards to uh, the benefit system. But in reality, many disabled people have actually given up. There was a lady said to me this morning, Mr. Lavery, do you understand what it's like to be treated like an animal? And I mean, that rocked me. Why should disabled people feel as if they're being herded into a corner and treated like animals? It's because they probably feel that way. They feel not even now as if they're a statistic. They're not even counted in life anymore, other than being an embarrassment to society. They feel as if they're personal rejects because of being disabled, sick and unwell. Total outcasts to society. We shouldn't be making people feel like that here in one of the richest countries in the world. Right. The attack on the disabled and the vulnerable is relentless, Mr Deputy Speaker. In people, disabled people, the sick, people who have been sick for many years, people who might have just been sick or disabled in the past few years, need a voice. And we shouldn't forget, it's fantastic being able-bodied and well in health but you're just around the corner some of us from being poorly from being disabled or being sick and unwell and perhaps terminally ill and we shouldn't forget that when we're making decisions in here to hammer the disabled and the vulnerable because we could be next yeah. mr speaker mr deputy speaker i was again discussing the waiting to, we put ourselves in some of these people's shoes. They become ill or they've been ill. They attend test after test. They attend the adult centres where the, the, the people sit behind the little Britain type scenario where the computer says no. That isn't any flexibility. And they're trying to explain the problems to somebody who isn't even medically qualified. Will my honourable friend give way? Of course I will. I, I'm grateful and I, I apologise for interrupting a very passionate speech, but is my honourable friend aware that the DWP are facing a court case because of their failure to provide proper information and support to the blind and partially sighted people yeah. who are supposed to be right. being supported into employment? Yeah. Thanks very much for that intervention. Yes, I, I'm very much aware of that. There's a number of cases proceeding through the courts, but as we've seen the past couple of weeks, the courts don't seem to be terribly in favour of those disabled and disadvantaged, disadvantaged either. I want to just, <coughs> with the two or three minutes I've got left, I want to just try and put ourselves in the shoes of these people who face these tests. And then they leave the test centre and they're waiting for weeks and weeks and weeks. In fact, they're waiting months and months and months on the envelope dropping through the door to tell them whether they've actually been accepted for benefits or not. Can you imagine these people, particularly people who have me got mental problems, can you imagine how they feel every morning looking for that envelope? And people who are looking for ESA, GSA, who are being <coughs> sanctioned for different reasons. I've got somebody who was sanctioned by the DWP because he was in hospital having a, a, an appointment because of a, a severe heart condition. And he got sanctioned and he didn't have anything, to, he didn't have any food, to, uh, any money to put food on the table for months because of a hospital appointment. There's been, there's been suggested in here that people have been in a coma and they've been sanctioned because of being on a hospital, a bed, an intensive care, and a, is this a way to treat ordinary human beings? And the answer to that, of course it isn't. 
Look at the other legislation. The legislation with regard to the bedroom tax. There's up to 50,000 people in this country just in the last few weeks had to pay bedroom tax. There's a lady who committed suicide because of the bedroom tax and her family got a letter later from this government saying that they're sorry she really wasn't part of the, the she shouldn't have had to pay because she was part of the uh, pre-1996 housing benefit regulations. We've got a, a failure in terms of the universal credit. It's being ruled out in two or three places. And it's an absolute car crash. But it's not the DWP that's uh, suffering. It's not members of parliament or the public that's suffering. It's the disabled people who rely on these benefits, who are anxious and who are suffering as a result of this absolute nonsense and, and chaotic organisation from the government. I mentioned before about ASA applications, whether or not you're in one or the, 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 the other grouping, and waiting to get an appeal. How many people have appealed? 40 percent, I believe, have been successful in appeals, and they're waiting for appeals. It was mentioned by one of the gentlemen across on the other, on, on the other side about the length of time. People's conditions change before they even can get an appeal heard. I mean, it's utter nonsense. And the way in which we are treating these people, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is an absolute disgrace. I think that there's lots of uh, facts and figures which have been spoken of today. I think disabled people, 11.3 uh, million, 8% uh, of the population, uh, are bearing 29% of the cuts. And the people with the severest disabilities, 2% of the population are bearing uh, a 15% of these cuts. It's an absolute outrage, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I think all in all, to sum it up, people are dying as a result of the Welfare Reform Act 2012. Disabled people are being evicted from their homes. People are being forced into the arms of unscrupulous lenders. Is this really the sort of country we want to leave to the next generation? This, Mr. Speaker, is IDS UK.